A new vulnerability was discovered in Microsoft's Azure Cosmos database that would allow for remote code execution of Jupyter Notebook clients. In this video, I'm going to explain what the vulnerability is and if you need to worry about it. In a blog post from November 1st, 2022, Orca Security has detailed a remote code execution vulnerability that they're calling a Cosmis. So this is a remote code execution in the Jupyter Notebook functionality of Azure Cosmos database. In short, if an attacker had knowledge of a notebook's forwarding ID, which is the UUID of the notebook workspace, they would have had full permissions on the notebook, including read and write access and the ability to modify the file system of the container running the notebook. Before we dive into the details of the vulnerability, how they found it, what it actually means, let's talk about Cosmos database first. What is Azure Cosmos database? And According to uh, Microsoft's own documentation, they say that Azure Cosmos Database is a fully managed NoSQL database for modern app development. It uh, allows for single digit millisecond response times and automatic and instant scalability. It's a globally distributed database, essentially. Uh, it's a way to read and write data from a local replica database to other locations around the world, makes it easier for people in different ge geographic locations to access data from that database. Now, this particular vulnerability is in relation to Jupyter Notebooks in Azure Cosmos Database, which is currently in preview than Microsoft's Azure environment. So what are, what are Jupyter Notebooks? Jupyter Notebooks are open source IDEs, essentially. They're interactive developer environments that allow you to create, execute, and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualizations, and narrative text. It, it's used very heavily for things like data exploration, data science stuff, machine learning, and you can create really cool looking graphs. So let's walk through some of the technical details around this vulnerability and get a better understanding of what's actually going on here. In the blog post from Orca Security, they detail a proof of concept to exploit Cosmos. And in this walkthrough, they demonstrate how they actually came across this particular issue, which is, is pretty neat to walk through. So first up, it looks like they set a burp suite between their browser and the Azure portal. So as they were creating Azure Cosmos database resources in the Azure portal, they were capturing that traffic and, and analyzing the request and response. In one of the cases, they noticed that when they deployed a new Cosmos database, they would get an endpoint address, they would get a unique port for that particular endpoint, and finally, they would get a forwarding ID, which is a GUID that acts effectively as a session for that particular notebook. So this is where some classic web app pen testing techniques come into play. During their analysis of this particular traffic being sent back and forth between the application, they saw that there was an authorization header. And in particular, there was a token there that appeared to be used for maintaining an authenticated state with that particular Azure Cosmos database URL. So what do you do if you're, if you're pen testing a web app? You try to take that authorization header off, right? And see what happens. And so they took the authorization header off, resubmitted the same request to the Azure Cosmos portal and found that, hey, it actually isn't checking that authorization header at all. And it was a complete unauthenticated access to this particular URL. After determining that the authorization header wasn't needed, they then tried to see, well, hey, can we inject any code into notebooks? So they created a, a sample notebook um, that just says, I'm the original notebook. They then walked through the process of submitting a request uh, to actually put a new parameter there that just says print hacked, as opposed to it being, I'm the original notebook. So it's it's a put request uh, leveraging just that, that URL, which it contains the GUID, Keep that in mind, that's that forwarding ID we talked about earlier. It is actually the most important part of this entire attack path without an authorization header. And sure enough, they were able to overwrite a Jupyter Notebook. Now, the final piece in order to get remote code execution, Orca Security found that when loading the Cosmo Data Explorer via the Azure UI, the Explorer dashboard is being built from a Python script uh, called kernelspec.py. And they were able to actually overwrite that file. So they manip manipulated it. They included a fairly straightforward Python uh, socket to connect out um, and spawn bin slash bash. And then whenever the data explorer was loaded, it would load that Python code and execute the reverse shell as well. So what does all this mean? And should you actually be worried about it? According to Microsoft, the short answer is no. <laughs> According to them, um, for multiple reasons, this particular issue is something that would have been hard to exploit and has since then been, been patched. So first up, Customers not using Jupyter Notebooks are not vulnerable to this. Now, according to Microsoft, 
99.8% of Azure Cosmos database customers do not use Jupyter Notebooks. So only 0.2% of, of Azure Cosmos database users actually would even have to worry about this in the first place. Secondly, this bug was introduced on August 12th and then fully patched August 6th. So there was a couple month uh, gap there where sure you potentially were vulnerable to this, but in order to exploit it would have actually been really, really tough. So an attacker would have had to have guessed that that forwarding ID. Uh, remember in the URL that we saw in the attack path earlier, that particular forwarding ID would have had to have been guessed or somehow intercepted, right? You know, potentially you could think of a scenario where if a, an attacker had compromised a user's desktop, uh, potentially they could intercept, you know, that URL, or if they were in between somehow and proxying it, um, there are definitely situations where they could have intercepted that particular URL and then leveraged it to access that particular piece. However, it's only active for an hour. So, you know, during that hour, a, an attacker might have been able to leverage it to some extent. So I was curious about these forwarding IDs and I wanted to see if there were any other ways that we could obtain those forwarding IDs besides just intercepting the web traffic. So what I did is I deployed my own Cosmos database and I tried uh, various means of trying to identify that forwarding ID via the Azure portal directly, as well as through some of the Azure PowerShell modules. And uh, in my testing, I was not able to find a forwarding ID. And in, you know, in this case, it would have taken you actually intercepting the traffic. The big thing here is that the potential impact is extremely limited to just read write access of the victim's notebooks during that one hour time window. The other thing that is important to note here is that it did not give the ability to execute notebooks, automatically save notebooks in the victim's account uh, or victims connected GitHub repositories or access data in the Azure Cosmos database account itself. So while this particular vulnerability has been patched and is likely not something you're going to need to worry about in the immediate future, it is a really good example to show how vulnerabilities are still being discovered and cloud-based resources. And it's something that we're gonna continue to see. We're gonna continue to see um, new resources being exploited and new vulnerabilities being discovered through old school means, just like, uh, you know, they, they modified the authorization header in, in a web request, right? That's classic web app attack. Um, and it's something that we should be continuing to look for uh, throughout our testing. So thank you for watching. Catch you next time.